Ever since humans have been around, we've been eating and we've been sharing meals together. And there's loads of famous meals throughout history. But this is, we've just read about it, the most famous meal that ever happened in the history of the world. And it's not famous because the food is particularly amazing. It's very plain food. It's famous because of what the meal symbolizes. And it's a little bit like when a couple get married, you know, most people can never really remember what they actually ate at their wedding uh, meal, their big celebration. But the point of it was what it was celebrating, this, the fact that you've just signed a covenant, really. You've just made this binding agreement for the rest of your lives that you're going to be together forever. This meal is a celebration of a covenant as well. And there's a whole load of symbolism tied up in it. And so Jesus takes the bread and he, he, give, he gives thanks. He breaks it. He gives it to them. He says, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And those words may be familiar to many of us. And the reason they are is because they're the words we often say when we celebrate Holy Communion together. Well, you know, the priest or the minister or the pastor will take the bread and he might say those words. Do this in remembrance of me. That word remembrance is not simply a, oh yeah, like I remember what happened a couple of weeks ago. It's like a remembrance that brings back all this stuff because it has present connotations. The best way that I can think to describe it is a bit like when you smell, you know, a perfume or, or like some particular food dish that's been cooking in the oven. And it just, you know, when you can get the, um, memories triggered by smell more than any other sense and you suddenly it brings something to you not just that you oh yeah I remember that happened but it's like as if it's happening all over again that's what Jesus is saying do this in remembrance of me with present connotations that it matters for today that it matters for now and his body broken that's what the bread symbolizes his body being broken on the cross and then given to me and to you is an incredible thing and what it, what it shows is that he went through the cross for me and for you and then when he takes the cup of wine, he says, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. And the, um, the thing about it being a new covenant, that word covenant is the same word that's for testament. So, you know, we talk about the Old Testament and the New Testament. All that is, is that's the old covenant and the new covenant. And the old covenant is the agreement that God made with Israel that I'll be your God and you be my people. And this is how you're to live. And when you get it wrong, make these sacrifices. So sacrifice this or sacrifice that. The new covenant is God comes to everybody, not just to the people of Israel, but to all of us. And he opens wide his arms on the cross and he says, anyone who wants to come and follow me and be my children, you can come. And the sacrifice is not something that you bring. It's something that I make on your behalf. That's why it's called the good news, because it's this incredible deal that he makes the sacrifice and we receive the blessing. So when we take the cup of wine at communion, we drink and we, that symbolizes the blood of Christ. And we remember in that moment that his blood is shed so that ours does not have to be, that his blood washes us free of all of our sins. This is an incredible meal and it's incredible not just because it happened 2,000 years ago but because it still goes on today whenever you and I share communion together.